Right, what's up guys and welcome to a new well, video from me to Skyrender. I'm, I've really been longing to talk about Saigard. Um, it's someone that wasn't always great and I think people forget about how flawed it was in its entry generation. Being the third of, you know, the legendaries with Yulotal and, well, Xernius, Xernius. Um, it was lacklustering to say the least. There are very few, I think, third legendaries who are supposed to be this grand vision of, well, brokenness that was just put aside and in tow you. Le the one I can remember before it is basically Curem and Curem Black. And like I said, very rarely does this happen. But now we have, well, another one. And the ground and. Um, That's the thing. You would consider, well, Dragon and Ground to be a phenomenal type in, and, and you'd be right. It is, by design, one of the greatest things ever. It just, it, it's compared itself to other ones that are just about the same. It, it's been comparable to basically a worse guard shop, and it's, it's not without reason. Um, I want to cover the things it has going for it before kind of leaning into why it didn't necessarily will work. Because it has a very good bulk, it is a very fat mon uh, with 108 in its HP and uh, 121 in its defense and 95 in its special defense. This guy takes hits and he takes a lot of them and it's actually quite speedy, 95 base speed, we have a super balanced Pokemon. It is a bit on the weaker side, 100 base, it's basically the same, same strength as Flygon, so it's never been a main hindrance and its special attack is usable later one, but it always had a few things that didn't go really in its way. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, because this stab combination in its debut generation, it only had Earthquake and Earth Power. Those were the moves, and trust me, Earthquake was probably the one going to use it. had Lance Wrath too, which was its synergy move. Yeah, it was its synergy move <laughs> at first. And um, it just wasn't worth it using that or uh, Earthquake whatsoever, because it was 10 base weaker, if I remember correctly. It was it was Earthquake, a weaker one at that. And because his main stab in, in Dragon, only Outrage. And Outrage in itself isn't bad, but when you don't have the power output, you don't want to get yourself locked in in a now generation where Fury is introduced, Outrage is all of a sudden even more of an hindrance to capitalize on. It would have been nice if we got something like Dragon Rush or something that could have been more shakeable, mainly because of its setup moves. Since it's a Serpent, it means it got access to Lies of Coal, we don't have a lot of mods that are good serpents, um, that should be actually said. Coming to mind, like Dunspaz and Arbok are the ones standing out, but I think Superior is our best one, and it will remain remain just so, but this guy also kind of followed that as a Pokemon that was in UUBL. It had the means to pull something up with Coil, and that Dragon Rush, that would have helped it even further, because the only benefactors of Coil when it comes to extra boots and accuracy boosts are actually Stone Edge and Iron Tail. When Iron Tail could have been nice for fairies, we already have trouble enough when it comes to this move alone as, well, there are mods that kind of straight on check it, and it shake it well, and first coming to mind is Skarmory. Um, there is, in theory, nothing it can do versus that, and the other one being Whimsicott. While not common in no OU, it still is a mod that just kind of noped it. It does get access to Sludge, however, and there were niche sets to kind of contradict that, but the meta wasn't uniform with that. It was more in Draft League with that's going to happen, but it's still something to keep in mind. Basically, the benefits of the call wasn't really that great. It also got access to Glare, making it a somewhat decent support mod. But yeah, here is where things kind of get troubling for it, because <clears throat> with this in mind, due to its bulk and being somewhat slower than the other ground and dragons, it didn't feel their niche. Which is good, it was introduced to something else, but it was definitely defined as lesser than what they could do. For example, Flygon had more speed, could U-turn, and could defog, and had a broader move pool by, by default, which made it more desirable, maybe more to the lower tiers, but if you use it in the higher tiers, it was because accessibility of Pivot Out, being able to choice lock yourself, which is something that this guy, of course, at this point kind of struggles with. The other one being Garchomp, being of course further base power stronger and speedier, on a two-verm correctly, making it faster of um, the free brethren 
Um, Garchomp was superior in many ways, but mainly because it actually hit stuff very well. And, and of course, the choice scarf set basically outspeed most of the, of the teams themselves. And um, the other one being that had actually Dragon Claw, Rao Praise, being actually if somebody could switch in, was surviving the hit, you can get out, um, which is not a tool you have with Outrage. Another aspect was the guard jump by default. Consider this guy was tanky. Saigar was definitely more tankier than guard jump, but guard jump had rough skin and access to Stealth Rock and Rocky Helmet, which Saigar in theory can do, but guard jump just was a broader, better defensive mon and a very dangerous mon towards the Talon Slaying, which was, well, honestly, the <laughs> like OU Smogon, Smogon OU Gen 6 defined was Talonflame and Bird Spam. And Garchomp was a response to that. Saigard is nowhere near close to pulling that off. Rough Skin, Rocky Helmet, and supporting Stealth Rock made Garchomp almost work. Yeah, it was it was a good mod, but it wasn't the best mod. And that speaks to how, how tough it was, since Saigard couldn't pull out that weight. Saigard was, in theory, closer to Dragon Dance, the tanky setup sweeper with less tools, but it had things that made it also work because with resistance to Stealth Rock, which meant that it could switch in and out versus a hazard play, thanks to Extreme Speed, which is also a move that has much like Dragonite, it could work as a semi-revenge killer and did that quite alright. But basically, no matter how much better in theory could be to Dragon Dance, Dragonite, Dragonite wasn't particularly good in Gen 6 OU, which meant that there was no reason using Zygarde, because Zygarde was definitely worse than Garchomp in many ways, and more so towards a team with Megas, it was kind of hard to make this one, well, be usable. That said, these were the options that made Zygarde not work, and there were a lot of options that, well, hold it back. Zygarde was, I shouldn't say bad in its own right, but too many benefactors to make sure that no matter what Zygarde wanted to do, there were options and mod that did that vastly better. And, and that's what happens sometimes. And I think that's the most interesting part here is that it was fine enough, but there were mods that dealt with it. And another aspect I forgot to mention was that thanks to Auras, it got access to lights of superpower, which made it sure that Ferrophone wasn't that solid. But this was also the same generation where Changrove was discovering Assault Vest, and all of a sudden, yeah, it worked to a Ferrophone, but now you have Tangrove, who's very solid to switch in, could pack hidden power ice, and all of a sudden, this was a matchup that could be very troublesome. Even if you pull off a call or Dragon Dance to go for an Outrage, still locked into that. And that could be, well, you're not sure you're going to take it out. And Slashway was just not to think about. It always carries a Soul Twist. Nothing to it. Now, Generation 7 was weird, because all of a sudden, like in Auras, People were hacking the game, realized that we have more moves towards Zygarde. We got Core Enforcer, which nullified abilities. You had the Thousand Waves, which was an offensive ground type move that locked you in, much like Block. Cool stuff. But then you had the Thousand Arrows, which it is one of those weird things when you see that, when you know, they were actually hacking the game, you saw Thousand Arrows, it made sure we use like word like gravity and Thousand Arrows, signature move that put down the Discarmory and made short work out of it. It was strange seeing that, because no way was, or at least I was thinking, there is no way they were releasing that. There were moves that was introduced to Gen 6 that yet to actually be a part of the game. Um, as Florets, or not Florges, its lesser form has a move that is not yet released. I was thinking, I was thinking hopefully that isn't happening. But it did. And Saigard was changed forever. All of a sudden, it started to work. And all of a sudden, its move pool issues was solved. Thousand Arrows was a very, very strong move. But it didn't necessarily matter. It doesn't define them on. We still have Psydosh, the 10% form was introduced, which is basically more like Flying God. It's speedier, has Thousand Arrows, it has superpower, but it's easily checkable because it doesn't have the power. And it's hard for it to set up because of its, well, lesser bulk to say the least. But now we have the bulk that defined it closer to Dragonite with a move it could spam. 
100 base power is still not a lot, but combine that with Joyce Van and it's very very easy for it to punish switching and Tapabulu, which in theory should have been its best check ever, a very very defensive fat grass type with grassy terrain and fairy type in bond with mean that it dealt easily with both of its stabs. In theory, the reason this didn't work was because first, terrain do not lower the ground based moves um, or the thousand arrow move. You are basically pulling out all the weight. It is a resisted hit, sure, but it's not half damaged like Earthquake would have done. The other aspect that is, I think, so great is we saw Saigars using either Poison Barb or Expert Belt and Carried Sludge Wave to make short work out of its potential checks. It was one of its sets. This was the thing. Saigar was running a lot of it. Saigar could run, in theory, whatever it wanted, but the best set that was going before Smogan decided to ban it because it was a short, short visit because Pirate Construct was allowed, which basically, it's another story. Shouldn't be, that that's, that was Saigar's original form and it's still one of the strongest in Generation 8's meta at the moment, now that um, Zession's banned. But the reason it works so well here is because because of that bulk, it is very hard to revenge kill a Zygarde that's actually set up a call. And one of its best responses in theory was Mamoswine. But with now a call and mostly running Yasha Bear, which reduced ice damage uh, by 50%, in theory, Mamoswine can't beat Zygarde no more. Thousand Arrow will kill it dead. Or if it carries superpower, it's definitely dead. But not only that, even if it's forced to take an icicle crash, he could survive it after a call, even without the Yasha Berry. But the other aspect is extreme speed. There is no scenario where Mamoswine gets the last lap with an eye shot before actually this dragon dancing, calling monster pulls out that extreme speed. It basically made sure that there were very few monsters that came in on it and beat it. And yeah, the reason you don't saw Dragon Dance that often was mainly because its best Dragon Stab was, after all, still outraged. It had some limitations to it, and there were still Dragons fast enough, even with Scarf, to take it out. But with Extreme Speed, it had the flexibility of hurting stuff before it went down and even getting them in range to where it could take it afterwards. And also, thanks to Thousand Arrows, the defensive mods that usually came in on it that were supposed to check it, like Celesteela, Skarmory, they were now grounded and most likely died the turn after because there was no way they were outspeeding this guy. So, Sangard went from being limited by default to very, very usable in a short amount of work. And yes, of course, Thousand Arrows is a factor, but as I said about Saidosh, it is its bulk together with this Thousand Arrows and made it work. It made a lot of flexibilities in the mood pool and it could do a lot of stuff really well. It, in theory, could just carry a thousand arrows and filler moves to make sure it work. But this was a tanky mon. We can, in contrast to Dragonite, the reason it works better than Dragonite is because there aren't responses it can't deal with properly. It hurt everything. And thanks to Bulk and Cole, it could stay in against a lot of stuff. And a few things that beat it, they were beating it because of necessity. Most likely a sack play, and that's not a position you want to be in. And uh, yeah. Saigar became phenomenal in a generation. It is still as viable, it is still banned in Smoke No You in Generation 8, and there is no way it's coming back. It is a phenomenal evolution of a Pokemon, going from being this weird third legendaries that nobody really knew what to do with, it had things it could do, but there were basically no reason to use them, to this is how it's done, this is what it's gonna do, it's gonna ruin the meta. Fuck it out. No, <laughs> let it be. I like it. I think this type of evolutions are very interesting and I hope to make more videos like this where I just kind of talk about how Pokemon can be buffed and what way they can be buffed at. And Saigar represents the very best for starting poorly to be very, very dangerous. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care of one, alright?